Step 3. Fourier series coefficients. In this step, we will finally derive expressions for the Fourier series coefficients, the ANs and the BNs that we saw in the previous steps. So, our goal is to expand a periodic function as a sum of sines and cosines, and we want to find those weights, ANs and BNs. Here's our Fourier series. It's a sum of all the cosines uh, oscillating at different frequencies and all the signs oscillating at different frequencies where the frequencies range from zero to infinity weighted by these uh, bn's and an coefficients and as we said in the previous step uh, just to make matters a little bit more simple we are considering two pi periodic functions and what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to find a way of systematically calculating the a0 a1 a2 up to a infinity and b1 b2 b3 up to b infinity and uh, we said that the clue to do that is to use orthogonality of sines and cosines so now we will see how orthogonality helps us in this task let's uh, consider coefficients ak how can we find them in order to do that, we have to take our function f of x and we multiply it by the basis harmonic cosine of kx uh, and we integrate over the whole period from minus pi to pi with respect to x. So really we're only taking the inner product between f of x and cosine k of x, uh, k times x. So let's substitute for our function f of x. Here at the top we've got our uh, uh, sum over a n uh, uh, cosine n x times uh, cosine k x and here we've got our uh, odd basis functions the odd harmonics the sines and that's a sum from uh, n equals to zero to infinity b n times the inner product between sine n x n x times cosine k x with respect to x immediately just by remembering what we derived in the previous step, we can see that these two functions, cosine nx and, uh, sorry, cosine kx and sine nx are orthogonal for any n and any k, meaning that this entire uh, sum, the integral goes to zero. So all we have to do is we have to evaluate the integral inside this blue box up here. So let's just first consider the case when k is equal to zero. So I'm not going to repeat the full integral, I'm just going to label it as a blue box. And what we can do is we can split the sum into first the term where uh, n is equal to 0 and the, the remaining terms, n equals to 1 going all the way up to infinity. So when n is equal to 0, we can see that cosine of 0 is just 1. And also we said we're considering the case of k being 0. So we've got 1 times 1 inside the integral. So we've got a0 times the integral from minus pi to pi of dx, which we know how to do. It's very easy. And then we've got the following sum for the remaining n terms, n equals to 1 up to infinity of the following function. Again, this can be evaluated very easily, and that's just 0. So all we are left with is this first integral, and we know that that's just 2 pi. Therefore, the whole integral inside the blue box is equal to 2 pi times a0. And look at that, we determined the first coefficient a0. So we have got our first formula. a0 is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral over the period of the function of the function itself. So this was when k was equal to 0. How about other case, non-zero case? Well, again, the red integral still remains 0. That's regardless of what k uh, value we are considering. And we have to look at uh, only this blue integral up there. And in this case, we can use our previous result derived in step two about the, uh, the orthogonality of cos nx times cos kx. And we have that, uh, the following uh, simplifying expression. This integral over here is just the sum n going from zero to um, infinity of a n times pi times delta n k. We derived this condition in step two. So all of these terms in here are zero except for a single term when n is equal to k. Therefore, the whole integral in the blue box is equal to pi times a k. And this is our formula for the remainder um, uh, of the coefficients a n. And we have a k is equal to one over pi 
times the integral over the period of the function, in our case minus pi from minus pi to pi, of the function itself, f of x, times cosine kx dx. Now we can do the uh, exact same thing for the coefficients of bk. And you guess, probably you can guess how to do that. Instead of multiplying our function, instead of taking the inner product of our function with cosine kx, we do it the inner product with sine kx. So we've got the integral from minus pi to pi, f of x times sine kx uh, times dx. And in this case, we can see that uh, these two functions, cosine of n or cosine nx time n sine kx are orthogonal. Therefore, this entire uh, sum vanishes, is equal to zero. And all we have to do is consider the following one. Here, we don't even bother with k equals to zero because immediately we can see that when k is equal to zero, this uh, entire expression is also to, equal to zero since sine of zero is equal to zero. And we can uh, just derive the following expression. So for any, any k and any n, we have this. The integral in this blue box and the sum is equal to the following. It simplifies to the sum uh, over n going from zero to infinity bn, so this term here, times, and this integral evaluates to pi times delta nk. So again, most all of the terms in this sum are equal to zero except for a single term, and that's when n is equal to k. So the sum itself is equal to pi times bk. And again, we can just take this guy right here. We know it's equal to our original integral up here. We divide both sides by pi, and we arrive uh, at our uh, formula for the uh, weights for the sine, sine basis functions. So bk is equal to 1 over pi times the integral over a period, which is minus pi to pi, f of x times sine kx dx. So we've accomplished our task. Now we know that the Fourier series of a 2 pi periodic function can be written in this form, where if you, can, if you notice before our sum was running from n equals to 0 to pi, and here too, we know that when n equals to 0 in the second sum, that term is equal to 0 because sine, zero, oh, sine of 0 is 0. Therefore, we can just consider n going from 1 to infinity. Whereas in here, we pulled out the n equals 0 term outside and we redefined it, we rescaled this by, by this factor of 2. And that makes our formulas for the ANs and BNs look a little bit nicer and symmetric. In this case, we don't need a special formula for the A0 term. So the Fourier series is given by this expression where all of these ANs, so A0 and also these other ANs, and the BNs are given by these uh, expressions. And to remind you again, this is nothing but the inner product of the function that we are trying to uh, expand in terms of its harmonics and these basis harmonics, cos nx and sine nx. And that's all, that's our Fourier series. In the next step, we're going to see uh, how it works uh, on some um, real examples.